Okay, hello, welcome back. This is 11.3. We're still working with uh, orders of algorithms, and we'll take a look at some applications here. So 11.3, analysis of algorithm efficiency. It's actually part one in the book. There's two parts. We'll just look at the first part. Okay. Uh, the book will introduce you to the sequential search algorithm. And the deal here is you have a list of, uh, well, a data that's in our, some sort of a, a list or an array. And uh, they'll want you to find a particular number in the um, data. So for example, find the number three in the following list. So the list is 5, 2, 1, 213, 12, 3, 4. Okay. So the um, algorithm will kind of just compare. It's going to look at this guy and say, is that number 3? And no, that's not 3. And then it moves to the next one. It says, is that guy 3? No. So move on. Is that guy 3? No. Is this guy 3? No. Is this guy three? No. Is this guy three? Oh, yes. And then we're done. All right, so in order to uh, put a measure on this algorithm, what we're going to do is think of a worst case and a best case and an average case. So our, the, the length of time um, for this algorithm is dependent on kind of the, the data that we're looking at, right? So. Um, what are we given? Well, we're given uh, um, a data array of n items. Okay. And then we'll think about the worst case that could happen. Is basically you have to go through every single data point in order to uh, find it, right? So we almost had to go through that that worst case scenario above. It's just the one before the last one we had to check was the one we had to find. So, and worst, but worst case, you have to check all of the items. Okay, so you must check every item. Uh, in which case, the order will be big theta of n. Okay. Um, then the best case, of course is when you get super lucky and the first one you look at is uh, the one you're looking for, okay? So in that case, you'll only check uh, one item and the order will be big theta of one. Okay? Um, the average case then Uh, you'll have to go through half of them, right? So, so you'll have to check n over two of them, and again, that will be big theta of n. Okay. Okay. So, uh, how in general are we going to work with this, and what what are we thinking about? We're we're thinking about time efficiency, so we're not really um, working with memory issues or anything like that. Okay. So, measuring time efficiency, and uh, what are we, how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to count what are called elementary operations. In, in the code, okay? So there'll be loops in the code, or, um, while loops, for, for loops, and every time you go through the loop and the code is executed, maybe you have three elementary operations, and uh, you count those up. So what are the elementary operations? Uh, you think of it as kind of two types. Um, there'll be the, the basic uh, uh, arithmetic types. Okay, So in the, in the homework, there's an algorithm for polynomial evaluation. which is a little different than how you would normally think. Basically, they're giving you a, a, a generic polynomial, and you have to you know, put in 3 for x. 
And they have an algorithm that does that, which is not the usual way you would think of evaluating a, a polynomial. Okay, but it's really interesting. Anyways, the number of operations you're counting up um, when you go through this algorithm are, are kind of dependent on uh, arithmetic operations. So what are arithmetic operations like multiplication, subtraction, addition, and division? In particular, in the polynomial evaluation, I think it's just multiplication, subtraction, and adding, which are adding and subtracting are kind of the same thing. Um, just in, okay. So anyways, uh, another example, a different type of example would be an algorithm for searching through a list. And that's what we saw above. So above, we didn't see any of the arithmetic, the, the traditional arithmetic operations, but we did see comparisons, okay? And we'll consider those as, as elementary operations. So comparisons, um, those things are like equals, uh, doesn't equal, um, greater than or equal to, or less than. Okay? Um, this, this doesn't include for us like, uh, defining something, so letting x be uh, rewritten as x plus 1. Okay, that could be a little confusing if you're not uh, um, oriented to this kind of thinking. Um, those kind of things, like rewrite, writing over a variable, they're not going to consider to be um, an operation. Okay? okay, so it'll take a little bit of trial and error in the beginning to really get the handle of it on it, um, but uh, just do the best you can, okay? So uh, part B, um, then the order of an algorithm. Um, again, there'll, there'll be these types above where um, there's worst case and best case, and that's because it depends on the nature of the data, but um, Usually for us and the, and the problems we're going to be working on, um, the little code snippets we'll deal with, the uh, and we'll call this algorithm A. Um, basically, A will depend only on the size of the input. Okay, so that's the first case they'll they'll, they'll put it in uh, some sort of box in the book. Um, A depends on uh, the input size only. Um, the second case, which is what we saw above, uh, the algorithm will um, kind of depend on not only the input, but also the, the kind of nature of the data, input size, and, and um, the nature of the data. Okay. So uh, above, the, the nature of the data refers to how scrambled, that basically, or, or I guess it, it depends on, you know, best case versus worst case. So yeah, so so when you're looking at these, it's, it's kind of, you're going to analyze it in terms of best case versus uh, worst case. Um, and they also talk about average cases too. That's kind of what we looked at above the average case. But um, for a lot of the exercises in WebAssign, you're, you're just looking at the, uh, the first one, the first type. Okay, um, okay. anyways, let's, let's look at some questions now, right? Um, uh, let's figure out the order of an, algorithmic, uh, an algorithm segment. Order of algorithm segment. And um, one formula that comes up again and again in the homework is the sum of the first uh, i integers from 1 to n. And that'll just be n times n plus 1 all over 2. OK, so that comes up. Um, I want to look at one with a floor function really quick. Uh, so this is from the book. It used to be number 8. It might be different now. but. Um, we have this code snippet for i going from 1 to the floor of n over 2. Um, a is going to be n minus i. Okay? Uh, and then you'll do your next um, i. Okay? So, the, the so he here is our um, code that's being executed. And the number of operations here is just 1. 
Okay, so one operation each time we go through the for loop. Okay. And how many times we have to do the for loop, um, there'll be n over 2 um, minus 1 plus 1 um, executions of the code. In other words, uh, every time we go through and execute the code, there'll be one, one time for every execution. So n over 2 minus 1 plus 1 um, operations. And uh, of course, that's just equal to n over 2. But there's there's kind of a problem here. Um, we need to figure that out in terms of n so we can you know say it's big theta of whatever. So the, the problem is you need to consider even and odd cases. So note if n is even, for example, if I had something like 8 um, as my n value, the floor of 8 over 2 is just equal to 8 over 2. So in general, if n is even, um, we have that n over the floor of n over 2 is equal to n over 2. Okay. So in that case, the number of operations is just n over 2. Um, if n is odd, uh, and we can again look at like a concrete example here, so let's say 9, right? So the floor of 9 over 2. That's going to be equal to 4.5, which is equal to 4. So that's the same as saying n minus one, 9 minus 1 all over 2. In other words, um, if n is odd, the floor of n over 2 will actually equal n minus 1 over 2. Okay. Okay. Um, in either case, though, the order is n, okay? In either case, um, the order of our algorithm segment, let's call it a, is big theta of n, okay? Okay, so um, when you have the floor function, you want to be a little careful to um, investigate even versus odd cases. Um, let's look at one that's a little bit more traditional. Uh, so for k going from 2 to n, and then we have an interloop for j going from 1 to 3n. Um, we have our code here, x is equal to a of k minus b of j. And then do your next j and then do your next k. Right. Okay, so um, this part right here that I'm putting in the bracket is your code part that's getting executed, and there's uh, one operation every time it's executed. So I just have to find out how many times it's basically executing. And in order to do that, you can do a trace table. So some people will just do it in general for n. I, I like to actually look at a particular value of n, but sometimes even that is misleading. So um, take it or leave it, I guess. Uh, I'll go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. So we have k and j. Um, if, k, if n is 3, I'm going to start k at 2. And then j will, will, will go from 1 to 6, right? So, it, uh, or rather, 1 to, to 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., all the way up to 9, okay, with 2s up there. And then uh, 2 will go to 3, and we'll have, again, 1, uh, 2, all the way up to 9. So it seems like all that's happening is uh, um, we're executing the code nine times for every k value. Okay? So it seems all we have to do is multiply the number of k values by 9, and we'll kind of have our answer. So in this case, the number of k values will be n minus 2 plus 1. And that just comes from the, the code for k, which I'm going to underline here in yellow. 
So the number of times we execute k is n minus 2 plus 1. And then uh, every time we go through a k value, we're, going, we're doing j from 1 to 3 times n, which in our case is 9. Okay, so it'll be n minus 2 plus 1 times uh, 3 times n. If you want, 3, three times n minus 1 plus 1, but it just turns out to be 3 times n. Okay, sorry I put that in yellow. I didn't mean to do that. It should be in white. But, uh, uh, okay, so in the end, this will be n um, uh, minus 1 times 3n. And if you multiply that out, it's just 3n squared minus 3n. So the order of this algorithm, a, must be um, big theta of n squared. Okay. So, yeah. So that was pretty easy. Um, the web assigned ones are pretty challenging in my opinion. So I just want to look maybe at two of those before I leave you to your own devices, web assigned stuff. Okay, so um, let's look at number five in there. Uh, we have four i going from one to five m. And then uh, we have a bunch of code stuff. So S is being set to zero. And then we have another for loop. So for J going from one to I minus one, then we have a bunch of execution stuff. So some operations, right? So S plus J times I minus J plus one. And then um, we have our next J, and then we have this R thing. So R is being set to S squared, and then we have our next I. Okay. So um, kind of looking for uh, operations or, or uh, elementary operations, there seems to be one there, one set there, and one set there. In this loop, uh, there are one, so we can sort of count them out, put it in yellow, one, two, three, four operations, and then, uh, so let me mark that, four uh, operations. And then whenever it jumps out of that loop, you're going to get an extra uh, operation here. So one operation. It's basically just a multiplication. S times S is S squared. Okay, okay. so... Um, this inner uh, loop will execute um, i minus 1 times, but the i minus 1 is, is from the outer loop. It's a little confusing, so what I want to do is just kind of pick up uh, an arbitrary n value and maybe do a trace code for it, or a trace table for it, sorry. So let n equal 2, and uh, the s and the r really isn't important. Um, all I'm doing is counting the number of uh, sort of executions. So um, I want to kind of trace out um, i okay, and j. Oops, sorry. I, I need an i and I need a j. And then I'm going to count that inner, the four operation execution. I'll call that uh, P. And then um, the one operation execution, when I jump out of that loop, I'll, I'll say that's E. Okay. Right, so I'm going to kind of work with that. All right, so I is initially set at 1. And then um, J is going from 1 to I minus 1. So in the first uh, sort of loop, J is set at 1, but it's going to 0. So that means I'm not ex executing that four operation S code there. Um, but I, once I do jump out of there, so there's no next J, so I'm done with that code, I still have to, to do one execution of the S squared code. Okay. And then I go to my next I, so I'm at 2, and uh, J will be going from 1 to 1, so I'll execute that four times, and then once it gets out of that, once I exhaust the J's, I'll have to execute that S squared thing once, okay, and then I'll, I'll um, go up to 3, 
okay, and then j will be set from 1 to 2. Okay, the first loop, it executes um, four times on that code, and uh, the, the number of operations are four times on execute that code. And, and then um, j goes to 2, executes another 4, and then once it, 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 it is done, j is up to 2 now. Um, so I have another execution on the outside of that one extra operation. And then I can increment i to 4. And uh, so j will go from 1 to 3. And every time it goes through, it's going to execute four times plus the one on the final execution for the s squared. <laughs> Ain't that kind of crazy? Um, some crazy code there. Uh, anyways, it'll keep doing that all the way up until 10 when i gets to 5 times n, which is 2 in my case, so that's 10. Um, at that point, I, j will go from 1 to 9. Okay, So 1, 2, 3, um, dot, 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 all the way to 9. Okay. And on every uh, pass, I'm executing four, uh, four operations. And on the last pass, I get an extra operation. Okay. okay. So let's take a look at the, um, the number of executions, maybe, of the, of the code. Um, just plain old executions or maybe even just thinking of the number of times j goes through it, right? So um, executions. OK, so um, what I'm really thinking about when I talk about executions is, is this thing right here, this s thing. Um, so the first loop, it didn't do anything. And I'm going to pick up the, the uh, the outer part, that R thing, this thing, at the end, I'll, I'll sort of just slap that on. Okay. So the, the first loop um, is doesn't do anything, but then the second one, the, uh, when I is 2, I do go through it once. And then when I is 3, I'll go through uh, 1 to I minus 1, so 2 times. And then when I is 4, I go through 3 times, all the way up to I is 10 when I, I go through that um, nine times, right? And uh, every time I do that, the number of operations then is four times that. So the number of operations will equal four times uh, this number of executions and then plus um, this one for every i value. So there were um, 10 i values in total. Right. So now I just have to make this general. Okay. So um, in general, then, what, what you're seeing is a sum four times the sum for the number of, in general, for the number of operations. What you're seeing then, um, especially here, is that n times n plus 1 thing from above. So I said that was an important formula here that you'll use uh, over and over again in the homework in variations, right? That sum can be uh, simplified using that formula. So in general, you know, we'll have uh, four, ugh, sorry. We'll have four times the sum from i equals one to um, five times n minus one. Okay. So in our case, it went from one to nine, but that's that's one to uh, five times two minus one, right? Of i, and then we have to add in these extra operations 
and it's just the number of uh, I values that, that you have, basically. So, um, or, or the count of I, right? So I is going from one to five N, so it's basically um, five N minus one plus one for the total number of I's, in other words, just five N. Okay, so, so what is this then? It's four times, um, remember the formula again, for the sum of I equals one to N of I is equal to N times N plus one all over two. Right, that's our formula. Um, so to figure out the sum from I equals one to five N minus one, I'm just gonna replace N wherever I see it with five N minus one. So instead of writing N here, I'm gonna write five N minus one. Right, so I got 5n minus 1 times, and then instead of writing uh, n here, again, write 5n minus 1. So you get 5n minus 1 and then plus 1. And it's all over 2. And then plus 5n, um, so that will equal 2 times 5n minus 1 times 5n plus 5n. And then that will equal um, 2 times 25n squared minus 5n plus 5n. And then that will equal 50n squared minus 10n plus 5n, which is equal to 50n squared minus 5n. Okay? Okay. Um, so my, my advice is to kind of first do like a concrete example and then try to extrapolate that into a general formula. And usually you're going to be using um, this summation formula for the sum of the first n integers. Okay, okay. Um, so that was an elementary operation guy. Let's look at one that does comparisons. Okay. In, in this next algorithm segment. And this is problem number four from WebAssign. So we have four i going from one to n minus four, and then four j going from i to n. Um, if a of j is greater than a of i, then do um, this replacement. Temp is defined to be a of i, and then a of i is defined to be a of j, and then a of j is to defined to be temp. Okay. And then we'll end our do and do and then hit an next J and then hit a next I. Okay. All right. So the the execution part is uh, right here. Let me put it in yellow, I guess. This thing. Okay. And it's only one operation, one elementary operation every time we go through the execution. Okay, so we're only basically only counting up ex executions. Um, note below it, there's a bunch of these redefinitions, but we don't um, record those as operations. Okay, we're just writing over something, so we don't worry about it. It's just the comparison, or if you see a multiplication or something like that, that's the only times we're gonna worry about it. Okay. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is uh, a sort of a trace table for a concrete example, and hopefully that will kind of um, give you the feel for how the thing is going. Okay, so I'm going to let n equal 8, and I don't really need to worry about the code stuff. I just need to trace out the i, the, the, j val the i value and the j value. Okay, so... Um, I'll have an I, and then I have a J, and then I'll, I'll sort of record the number of times I'm executing the code as I go through. Okay. Okay. That'll be E. Okay, so I starts uh, from 1 and goes to N minus 4, and J is always going from 1 to N. So J is always going from, oh, sorry, it's I to N, so you got to be a little careful. 
Um, so I will start at 1, and J will start at I, so that will also be 1. And uh, um, J will run from 1 to 8. Okay. So when J is 1, um, I'll have one operation. Okay. And, uh, okay. and then J will go the 2. So... And then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So the number of times this code will execute will be eight times. And I'll just put that here. Then I will increment the two. And J will go from two to eight. So two, three, four, you know, dot, 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 all the way up to eight. And the number of executions that time will be eight minus two plus one, which will be seven. Um, and then let me go to the next one. So that will be three. So a J will go from three to eight. And that, the number of execution, the number of operations there, because the executions, well, the number of executions is the same as the number of operations, right? So the number there will be um, eight minus three plus one, so six. And, and it goes on and on until you get all the way up to n minus uh, four, which, in our, well, I guess the next one is n minus four is four. Sorry, I'll just put that in there then. And uh, we'll start at four, and then five, six, seven, eight. Can actually fill those in. And the number of executions there. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. One thing to note is, uh, okay. So so the total number of executions or operations. is going to be the sum of these executions in the bottom row. So it's going to be 8 from the first I, and then second from, 7 from the second I, and then 6 from the third I, and then 5 from the fourth I. Okay. Um, in general, the number of operations, in general, will be equal to your n value, n plus um, n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus dot, dot, dot. And how many are there? There's always going to be um, n minus 4. So if you look back at the i statement, the number of i's is going to be uh, n minus 4 minus one plus one, so um, n minus four of them, right? Uh, so the, the total number is always going um, to, to the last one is going to be, uh, sorry, uh, the total number of the last term, the, uh, this term right here is always going to be, um, and this guy right here is going to be n minus 4 plus uh, 1, okay? Um, so this will go down to, yeah, n minus 4 plus 1, or, uh, sorry, uh, what did I write above? It's, it's n, it's going to be, so what am I doing? I'm trying to figure out what this last number is, right? The, the number of times I execute that last uh, part. The number of times I did this. Okay. And uh, what I'm saying is that uh, bummer. <laughs> 
it, it's going to be, uh, it's always going to be four, okay? Um, you're always going down to uh, five. Sorry, not four, but rather five. Um, and it's because of the I value always going to um, N minus four, okay? So um, if N was equal to nine, the number of operations would go eight, uh, or rather nine for the first one, right? And then the next one would be eight, and then the next one would be seven, and then the next one would be six, and the next one would be um, five, and, and then they, that would be it, okay? It's, it's, I guess it's hard for me to put in words, but that's, that's what's going on. Um, all right, so let me pause the video. Okay, so the, the why four um, is the ultimate question. I'm sorry, I'm bumbling this. Um, it's from the J value. So if you if you look this 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 last you know section, I'm trying to figure out how many are in there, right? How many times is the last operation? This this guy right here. Uh, how far do I add down to, basically? Or where, you maybe think of it, where do I start adding? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. If, you, if N is 10, you know, what is it? Um, it's, and I'm claiming it's always going to be, uh, this last section is always going to have four, five operations. I keep saying four. And it's kind of, you can see it's from here, right? So that last um that last bit is going to be going from I, the last one, N minus four to N, okay? So it's going to be going uh, for the last section, it goes from uh, I equals N minus four, because that's the last I value, to n, okay? And then if you look at the amount of uh, i's from n minus 4 to n, that's what you're getting down here, okay? That's this guy right here. Um, so what is that? It's just, you know, your n minus the n minus 4 and then plus 1, okay? So that, what is that? It's equal to n, uh, Sorry, this this is equal to n minus n plus four plus one, which is equal to five. Okay, so this last bit um, that you're adding in is always going to end at five. In, in other words, if uh, n was eleven, the number of operations is going to end up being eleven plus ten plus nine plus dot 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 plus all the way to five. Okay, um, in general, then. This kind of allows us to make our statement. Uh, the number of operations, or, or try to figure out the order of this algorithm, the, the number of operations will be um, basically n plus n minus 1 plus dot, 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 all the way down to 5, okay, which is equal to um, 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus dot, 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 all the way up to n. Okay. And I want to start using my formula, right? So this is the same thing as 1 plus 2 plus dot, 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 plus all the way up to n, and then minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, okay? In other words, it's the sum of the first n integers from 1 to n of i minus uh, 7, eight, 10. Okay. And... Uh, so that will be n times n plus 1 all over 2 minus 10, which will be n squared plus n all over 2 minus 10. In other words, uh, the algorithm A has order 10. It has order uh, 
well, sorry, n squared, right? So a is big theta of n squared. But, all right, so those are challenging to say the least. They're challenging for me, but please know that I'm not exactly a computer programmer myself. Hopefully uh, you'll fare better with these if you are a hardcore computer programmer. Um, anyways, uh, the last section I want to look at then is insertion sort. And uh, the insertion sort algorithm the, is one of these ones that's dependent on the nature of the input. Um, and it's big theta of n squared for your um, worst and average cases. And uh, let's take a look at the algorithm and sort of write it out. So the algorithm 11.3.1, the input is going to be uh, an array and also the length of the array. So you'll get an N and then um, this A1, A2, A3, A4, whatever. And then the algorithm. So we have a for loop for k going from 2 to n. Um, we'll define x to be a of k. And uh, we'll define j to be k minus 1. And then we have a while loop. So while uh, j is not equal to 0, we will do this if then statement. If x is less than a of j, then um, we kind of do a replacement. So a of j plus 1 will be defined to be a of j. And then we'll replace a of j with x. And then increment j downwards. So j will be, now be j minus 1. And uh, uh, otherwise, or else, we will let j be equal to 0. Um, if our x is not less than the one before it in the list, and then we end our else, or rather end the if, and then end the while, and then increment k. And then output the sorted list. Okay. Okay, so what is happening here? Um, you'll be given a list of numbers, like 2, 8, um, 1, 3, 5, and you're trying to put them in order, okay? So the algorithm will um, start by letting x equal um, this guy right here. Okay, and what it's going to do is compare that guy to the one after it. And if the, this uh, 2 is less than 8, then it's going to swap the 2 and the 8. Okay, if not, then it's going to jump out of the loop at this point. Okay, then it's going to move over to 8. Okay, and it's going to let x be 8. And in that case, it'll, it'll compare 8 to 1. And if those are out of order, then it's going to swap them. And of course, these are out of order, so it's going to swap those. Okay, and then one becomes kind of your, your new uh, uh, comparator. Um, you want to compare that to the one before it, and if it's less than, then you swap. So one, two, eight, three, five. Okay, okay. and then um, I, I just kind of go in that um, fashion until the whole thing is sorted, right? So now I'm comparing, uh, I guess I'm at 
eight and three, comparing those. Um, three is less than eight, so I swap it. And then I compare three to two. Three to two, three is not less than two, so then I jump out. And then I'll compare uh, eight and five. I'll swap those, compare five to three, and I'm done. Okay, okay. so that's, that's the idea. Uh, let's actually try an example with a trace table. Okay, so this is, um, I think it's the example in the book. And we have six, three, five, seven, two. And uh, we'll go M, X, J, K, and then our list. A of one, A of two, A of three, A of four, and then A of five. Okay, so n is officially one, two, three, four, five terms long there. Uh, J is, looking at the algorithm, um, apparently k minus one. So k is initialized to be two. Um, J again is k minus one, so that's one. And x is going to be a of one. And what, so this is six, three, five, seven, two, given up from above. And then X again is A of K. So A of two, and that will be three, right? Okay, so the first step, and I, I literally have to write these out uh, in the margin up atop. So my first step, I'll, um, j is not zero. I'll be looking at is x, which is three, less than a of j. So a of one, and a of one is six. Okay, so is that true? It is true. So I'll let a of two um, be equal to a of one. Um, which just means to swap the six and the three, right? So three will be a one, six will be a two, and then I'll redefine x to be a of one, okay? So a of um, j, which is one, will be um, x, so x is three, okay? Yeah, so A of two, I put six into the second position, and then I put three into the first position, and then I'll, I'll change J to zero, okay? Okay, um, now I uh, end the if, or sorry, I end the while, because J is now equal to zero. And now I uh, increment the K value to the next, guy in line, so that'll be three. And uh, uh, what else do I need? K is three, so J will become two, and then X will be A of three, which is five. Okay. So I'll, I'll do all that before I go into the while loop, and now I'll go into the while loop. Okay, and again, I'm going to do sort of my scratch work up in the top margin. So x now is 5, and I'm asking, is that less than a of uh, j, which is now 2? Okay. So is 5 less than the guy before it, basically? And the guy before it is 6, and yes, it is. So you're going to make a of um, 3 now equal to a of 2. In other words, you're kind of swapping, right? So you're putting 6 into the A of 3 position, and you're putting 5 into the A of 2 position. You're putting X into A of 2 position, right? And uh, then you're going to take J down by 1. Okay, so J becomes uh, 1. And then... Um, uh, 
do it again, right? Well, while j is not equal to zero. So I'm not done yet. So again, I, I'm looking at, uh, um, where am I? Is, is x, which is five, less than uh, now a of one. So it's scanning over the whole list. It did a swap. And it's like, okay, I know that A2 has to go on A3 position, but now is the A, the old A3 is maybe potentially that should be A sub 1. So I have to go, literally go through and check it every with every other guy before it. Okay, So is 5 less than A sub 1? And A sub 1 is 3 at this point, and it's not, right? So else you let J go to 0, and then you'll jump out of that if part of the of the code, and uh, then you'll jump out of the while part of the code, and um, so you'll go to the next k value in line. So you'll hit 4 for k, and then you're going to uh, rewrite um, your x now is a of 4, so x is now 7. And then your j will be k minus 1, which is 3. All right. And then we'll be entering the if loop. So we'll go to our next column in the table. So I'm going to erase some of my scratch work here um, so I can do some more stuff. Okay. 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 Um, so where am I? Now I'm comparing x, which is 7, to the guy before it. So is 7 less than a of 3? Is 7 less than basically 6? And in this case, it's no. Okay, so now because all, everything before is supposedly kind of sorted, I don't need to check out 7 with everything below it. Okay, 7 will be um, good where it is. So I can say uh, um, it's, it's j is 0. Okay, so j gets set to 0 and we kind of jump out of the, the loop again. So we end the if, we end the while, and we increment k to the next value, which is 5. So k is 5, j is 4, and x is a of 5, which is 2. Okay, and then we're going to be now entering the while loop. So now I'm doing more comparisons. So let me erase this and take a look at the comparisons. So um, right now I have is x, which is 2, less than a of uh, 4, the guy before it. And um, of course it is. It's less than 7. So we're going to let um, a of 5 be 7, or a of 4. Right, which is 7. Uh, so I'll put 7 in a of 5. Right? And then I need to um, let a of 4 be 2. So a of 4 is equal to x, which is 2. So I put 2 there. Okay? And then um, j will go down to j minus 1, which is 3. And then I'll have to go through another loop. Um, so now... I'm checking to see if 2 is less than a sub 3, right? So a sub 3 is 6, and that is true. So a sub uh, 4 will be now where 6 goes. So I'm placing 6 in a sub 4. And again, I'm going to replace a sub 3 with uh, the 2. Okay, so I just... I swap those, and then I'll take j down by 1. And, and that's got how it's going to go, right? Um, so uh, I compare 2 to a sub 2. I compare a sub 3 to a sub 2. 2 is less than 5, so I'm going to put 2 in the 5 where 5 is and put 5 where the 2 is, and then decrease j by 1. And then I compare 2... The, the object in a sub 2 to the object in a sub 1, which is 3. Um, 2 is less than 3, so I put 3 where 2 was and put 2 where 3 was. And then I decrease j. 
And then I should be done, right? Because um, it says next K. K is sitting at 5, though, so there is no next K. This K is going from 2 to N. So I'm, I'm done, and the list now is officially sorted. So you can kind of read off um, the list. Where, where is the sorted list, right? So the sorted list would be right here, and we'd have to put it um, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. Okay, it's kind of a nightmare to trace, but once you get the, the idea of how the code operates, um, it's, it's kind of easy to, to do it in um, WebAssign. They're not going to ask you to do a trace table. They're just going to have you list kind of how things are changing as you go from one step to the next step. So in WebAssign, for the insertion sort algorithm, you would have 6, 3, 5, 7, 2, and then you would go 3, 6, 5, 7, 2, and then you would go... Um, uh, you'd have to sw swap the, the 5 and the 6. So it'd be 3, um, 5, 6, 7, 2. And uh, then you pretty much wouldn't do anything um, until you got to the next if uh, statement. And then that would put the 2 in the front. 3, 5, 6, 7. OK, okay so. Um, Hopefully that kind of gets you through the homework. Um, and, and the last couple of sections in the homework, there is another algorithm, not just the insertion sort, uh, but there's also, um, let me get it up. Yes, I am still here. Oh, crud, I hit no. I have to throw out the computer, right? Um, so number... Uh, Number six is an insertion sort. And you can kind of see uh, my numbers were seven, two, six, eight, eight, five. So I would have to swap the seven and the two first. So I have two, seven, six, eight, five, and then I have to swap the seven and the six. So I got two, seven, two, six, seven, eight, five. And then um, I'm not really doing anything. Uh, I just go through kind of the if part of the loop, and uh, then I, I have to swap the five up to where it needs to be. So I guess in my code, um, the three, so there should be one extra, one extra line here for when I did nothing, basically. So three, six, five, and then three, five, six, seven, two. And then for the seven, there was nothing to do. So you have to write three, five, six, seven, two. And then finally move the two up. So two, three, five, six, seven. Okay. Oh, excuse me. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, so that's the um, insertion sort. Be careful, There's the, the next one in the homework is selection sort, not insertion sort, and there's a different algorithm for it. Um, I basically wouldn't do a trace diagram for figuring that out. I'd kind of just read the algorithm statement and then use that to um, figure out how to rearrange the terms and, and uh, at each step, okay, for number seven. Um, number six is also selection sort, and they're talking about the order of this algorithm. Um, uh, number nine, there's a polynomial evaluation algorithm, so you click on that blue and it'll take you to the link, and it'll show you where it is. But anyways, um, the, yeah, so what is the order of this algorithm? How did I know it was n squared? And it, it's because basically at every kind of step, what you're doing, if you have your you know, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, um, you first are kind of, you start here, right? And you're not doing anything, but then you go here and you compare it with everything before it. So this guy has um, one comparison. 
and then you go to this guy and you're comparing it to everything before it. So we'll have like two comparisons. And then this guy will have like three comparisons and this guy will have four comparisons. So it's kind of like the sum of i from i equals one to n minus one, which will be um, n minus one times n minus one plus one all over two comparisons, which is of course um, basically n squared over two, right? Um, type of, of comparisons, which implies it's order n squared. All right, so um, that's why this 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 uh, list of operations is is that order. And uh, okay, let's leave it at that. Um, and we'll, this was a hard section, I think, uh, and we'll leave it at that. Okay, so thanks for watching.